Good evening, everyone. Good to see everyone here, whether you're tuning in on the live stream, whether you're here in person. Uh, this is our first midweek uh, Advent service. So we've got a special series that we're doing. You might notice we've got some kids coming up front here, too. Uh, we're trying to have some participation uh, for for our students, for our children. So uh, these individuals here are going to help us as we go through doing some actions. And so uh, you can watch them, and uh, especially the actions during the invocation, that'll be the same each week. So maybe if things are a little unknown this week, but as we go on, uh, you guys will um, kind of learn what we're doing. If you would please rise. Our invocation will be spoken responsively, uh, but also follow along with the actions as well. In the name of the Father who created us. In the name of the Father who created us. 
and of the Son who came to, uh, came to earth for us, and of the Son who came to earth for us, and of the Holy Spirit who fills us with his love, and of the Holy Spirit who fills us with his love. We worship as we wait in patient faith for Christmas and for Jesus to come again. We worship as we wait in patient faith for Christmas and for Jesus to come again. Amen. Amen. All right. We light the first candle of the Advent wreath as we ponder waiting upon the Lord with faith. We wait for your coming, O faithful Lord. Abraham and Sarah waited for their son, Isaac, long ago. Now we wait for you, O Lord. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. No one can put out that light. It will last forever. No one can put out that light. It will last forever. You may be seated. rise. We have a time of confession and absolution. Because we are human beings, we sin every day. When we do, the best thing we can do is go to God and tell him that we are very sorry. Let's do that right now. Take a few moments to silently confess your sins. We confess together. Lord, I have done bad things. I have had bad thoughts. I have said bad words. I haven't done the good things you want me to do either. I am so, so sorry. Please forgive me. Open your eyes. Look up. 
Jesus loves you so much that he died for all those sins. He forgives you. Have joy. Jesus loves me. Thank you, Jesus. We pray. Dear Jesus, you promised that you'd come, and you always keep your promises. Give me the faith I need to remember that every day, when I am anxious or scared, keep reminding me so that I may grow in faith every day. Amen. be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading is Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 through 9. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you, and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall, you be, no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you to your offspring after the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading today comes from Romans chapter 4, starting with the 13th verse. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope, he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him, un- made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do 
what he had promised. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This time we have a time of offering. If you brought a financial gift, you can um, put it in the receptacle in the back of church. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, uh, this is one of our Faith and Family First Wednesdays. And uh, when we're doing that uh, once a month, and we've got a special topic that we will present uh, afterwards, um, after, after our service. And uh, usually we would tie that in to the sermon, but uh, we are doing an Advent series. So um, what I'm talking about is a little separate from uh, that t- discussion that we'll have afterwards, uh, after this service. So in his book, The Undaunted Courage, Stephen Ambrose writes about the Lewis and Clark expedition that took place in the early 1800s. And after facing massive challenges, right, hunger, fatigue, desertion, illness, and so much more, Lewis and Clark finally reached the headwaters of the Missouri River that was near Three Forks, Montana. Now, all their advanced uh, information that Lewis and Clark had, uh, they believed that once they had reached the Continental Divide, so just about 100 miles west of, of Three Forks, They would face a half a day portage, reach the waters of the Columbia River, and then they would float out into the Pacific Ocean. See, the hard part of their journey was behind them, and now it was time to celebrate. Or so they thought. See, Lewis climbed the bluffs near the Continental Divide, and he expects to see the Columbia River. But imagine what he felt that when instead of seeing the Columbia River, He was the first non-Native American to see the Rocky Mountains. They couldn't go back, and there was no clear way forward. And we have a word for that. It's trapped. They were trapped. Do you know that feeling? What it's like to, to be trapped? We all do, right? In some way, shape, or form, we've all felt trapped. Maybe recently, you know, once we've conquered some old habit, we find that we have relapsed into those old ways, those ways that are too comfortable. Maybe we feel stuck in a dead-end marriage, a dead-end job, a dead-end life, maybe all of those things. Like Lewis and Clark, we can't go back, 
but also like Lewis and Clark, there appears no way forward. We have a word for this. Trapped. We know what it's like to feel trapped. Welcome to the world of Abraham and Sarah. The story begins in Genesis chapter 11. Abram, as he was known back then, was the son of a man named Terah. And the family was from this ancient Babylonian city of Ur. And it was in Ur that Abram met Sarai. That was her name back then. And at some point, point uh, Abram and Sarai, they get married. And they move from Ur to Haran, a city on the Tigris River. And then God showed up. Genesis chapter 12. God called to Abram and Sarai and told them to go to the land of Canaan where he would make them a great nation. A great nation. He was going to do this through, of all people, Abram and Sarai. Abram, 65 years old. Sarai, 55 years old. Genesis chapter 11, verse 30, also says that Sarai was barren. She couldn't have children. So can you imagine what Abram and Sarai thought, right? A great nation? We can't even have children. And on top of that, we're too old for this. But they waited. And waited. And waited some more. And still no son. They got tired of waiting. When Abram was about 86 years old, Sarai 76 years old, and who could blame them? This is a lot of waiting for God to fulfill this promise. So Sarai pushed this woman named Hagar into Abraham's tent. And nine months later, from that union, gave birth to Ishmael. Now fast forward 13 years from there. Genesis chapter 17, where we've got our reading for tonight. Abram is 99 years old. Sarai is 89 years old. And Sarai is still barren. The household is full of, of rancor and strife because of this whole Hagar and Ishmael thing, right? We've got a word for that. It's trapped. And then God showed up. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. The Hebrew phrase for this, God Almighty, is El Shaddai. God said, I am El Shaddai. El Shaddai means God is sufficient. It means God is able. It means God is powerful. El Shaddai means God is Almighty. He can do these things. And what does El Shaddai do when he shows up? He cuts a covenant. The term covenant appears five times in our readings from Genesis 17. And in fact, it, it appears eight more times in the rest of Genesis 17. And three of those times when God's talking about a covenant, he says that this covenant is eternal. It's forever. I think God is trying to make a point. In the Old Testament, though, you know, covenants weren't made. They were cut. People didn't sign their names to a piece of paper to make a covenant. You didn't have some attorney or some notary public who's there to help with this. No, a covenant was made in blood. In the Old Testament, you cut a covenant. People killed animals. They slit their throats. They pour out their blood. Cutting a covenant was messy business. And God fulfilled his covenant promise to Abraham and Sarah through the birth of a son, Isaac. All the more, God fulfilled the covenant promise to us through the birth of his son, Jesus. That's what we look forward to celebrating in Advent, right? That God showed up. He showed up again in Jesus. And this is a covenant. And a covenant brings blood. There was blood in Gethsemane. There was blood in Gabbatha. There was blood in Golgotha. The everlasting covenant promise to Abraham is signed, sealed, and delivered for you. Signed in the Savior's cleansing blood. Sealed in the Holy Spirit. Delivered in the means of grace. Right? That's the gospel. That's baptism. That's holy communion. Where Jesus says, this is the blood of my covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
But you know what? When we're trapped, we hear other voices, don't we? There's these pervasive voices that try and, and sway us. Hedonism says, you know what? Just party your way out. Materialism says, spend your way out. Individualism says, you are the way out. Nihilism says, there's no way out. And if we listen to these voices long enough, our feelings of despair become this insidious virus that destroys our body and mind and our soul. And trying to self-medicate, it only takes us further. And we feel trapped even more and stuck in self-bondage. When we feel trapped, right? We certainly don't whistle why we work right? And we see others whistling while they're working. We give them the look, and we know what that look is, right? That look that says, well, are you so naive, right? Haven't you read the news? Haven't you heard the reports and the studies? Airplanes fall out of the sky. The bull markets go bare. Terrorists terrorize. A new variant going to show up and make this pandemic go on. People who are good, they turn bad. The other shoe will drop and there will be some fine print to be found somewhere feeling, fe feeling trapped in a dead end job or a dead end relationship it twists us into these emotional pretzels it makes our eyes twitch it makes our blood pressure rise it makes our head ache we numb our pain with six packs and food binges and too much TV we express our angst and volcanic anger and silent stares. We're experts, all of us, at this. A Hungarian man named Andris Tamas fought for the Germans in World War II. The Soviets captured him in 1944. Andris Tamas went crazy while he was there in the Russian gulags. After Tamas was transferred to a mental health hospital, right, the Soviets, who weren't exactly efficient, eventually forgot who he was. It wasn't until 1998 that a doctor recognized Andris Tomas, that he was speaking Hungarian. Everyone else thought he's just some crazy guy, and he recognized that this guy's speaking Hungarian. And so he opens this medical file for this guy for the first time in decades. And he discovers this, this whole case history. He notifies the, the authorities in Hungary. And the POW finally returned home in 1999 to a, a hero's welcome where he was called the last prisoner of World War II. And we sometimes have felt like that, the last prisoner of World War II. Today, some of us even might feel like that. We feel like we're at the end of our rope but hear this loud and clear. God has shown up in Jesus Christ. And we're not trapped. Say no to that lie. You are not trapped. Sin can't trap us. Jesus forgives that. Death can't trap us. Jesus has conquered that. Hopelessness can't trap us. Jesus answers our prayer. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck you from his hand. We sing these words in one of my favorite songs, in Christ alone. I'm convinced that nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul writes those words in Romans chapter 8. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. God spoke those words to Abraham and Sarah. What does this mean? It means that no matter what you might be feeling, what you might be feeling trapped by, maybe it's caring for small kids, Maybe it's worrying about teenagers. Maybe it's a broken heart. Maybe it's an overwhelming feeling that everything has just gone terribly wrong. No matter what it is, wait upon the Lord with faith. Because of Christ's everlasting blood covenant with you, death is dead, sin is forgiven, hope is eternal, and victory is won. We have a word for that too. It's free 
free. You are free. The waiting is over. When Christ was born, God fully showed up. Jesus is our Emmanuel. He is our God with us. Put your full faith in him. Because in this little baby, because of this little baby, you are forever free. Amen. If you would please rise as we have a time of prayer together. We share our prayers responsively. Heavenly Father, we wait for you more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Lead us in your truth and teach us. For you are the God of our salvation. For you we wait all the day long. O oh God, inspire us to wait for you faithfully. Serve you faithfully. And give to others generously. Gracious Lord, grant healing for the sick. Courage for the faint-hearted, hope for the discouraged, and great clarity for all in the valley of decision. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trials. not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we close with the benediction, I just want to let you know about the talk that we will be having afterwards in the fellowship hall. Um, I'm going to talk about the two kingdoms that we as Christians, as God's people, are kind of walking a line with, with two kingdoms. We have a, a citizenship in heaven and a citizenship here in this, in this world, and trying to navigate those two things. So I know we've got our high school youth here, and you know maybe if you're a parent or a mentor and you're staying for that talk, I want you guys to know why maybe they're asking you some of these questions uh, and, and discussing these things. But you know the, the idea that God uh, works through both things, through the kingdom here in the, in the church, through the kingdom of heaven, but also through the kingdom of this earth, through government, uh, works through both things uh, for, for righteousness in this world. So we'll have a discussion on that in the fellowship hall. Everyone is welcome to that. And um, allow me to close with the benediction. May God give us the faith of Abraham, the hope of Isaiah, the joy of Elizabeth, and the gratitude of Zechariah. God will make us strong and courageous as we wait upon the Lord. Amen. Savior of the nations come See